Perry Devlin of the Devlin Sawab. <clears throat> Did you know that Sawab was a popular household name both pre-Civil War as well as post-Great Depression? I personally had never heard the word, reminding me that so many things can change in 100 years, which makes me very hopeful. So Harry was a graduate of the Devlin Business College, which, surprise, his dad owned. Um, and they were known for training men and women for commercial pursuits, general business, and office work. They also taught zoop drills, where they had teams of, again, both men and women in the, 18, in the late 1800s. Their training was prized, and many students continued to hold ranks as captains and lieutenants of the U.S. Army and National Guard. Harry here was the leader of the Devlin Swabs, who traveled with Buffalo Bill from 1903 to 1909 and Sells Photo Circus from 1913 to 1960. <clears throat> they performed a show that consisted of, and I'm going to quote this, a series of close order drill formations interspersed with rifle maneuvers at a cadence of 300 steps per minute. Yes, you can find a performance on YouTube. At the end of the drill, the entire company scales a 12 foot wooden wall with speed and grace. And before I get into the history of this wall, I just want to mention. That out of the same town Devlin Swabs was born, Jackson, Michigan, another company appeared on the El Edsa Sullivan show six times. They performed for two presidents, Eisenhower and JFK, as well as at the Madison Square Garden doing this routine. So George Devlin, good old dad of Harry, was a Zouave soldier who fought in the Civil War for the Union. <clears throat> the Zouave's colorful uniform, behavior on and off the battlefield, and unquestionable bravery assured them a reputation that was unequal at the time. Their uniform was of Arab design. Their trousers were basically dresses, just sewn by the knee. They had their lower legs were normally protected by white canvas leggings, and they had a short waist-length jacket that was constructed without a shirt and often worn open. <clears throat> Cuffs were slit into the elbows for air circulation that could be closed with an iron hook, and felt hats and belts worn. Although always decorative, the designs of the Zouaves vastly changed throughout time and place of where they were performing. They were active from 1830 to the 1960s. In French, the phrase Play les bois is translated to to act the goat or behave wildly. But don't let that fool you, people trained in this fashion were highly skilled. They were a light infantry regiment <clears throat> that had a mobile and fluid function, often used as scouts, raiders, and my personal favorite, skirmishers who were just used to, to harass, delay, and disrupt supply lines and generally soften up the army before the main attack. <clears throat> and while they held much popularity in America in the 1860s and the 1960s, their origin was from 1830 and a continent away. So what I'm about to go over is why paying attention to history and who wrote it is so important. For this seemingly innocent entertainment in the early and mid-1900s has a twisted past. You see, the origin of the Zouaz was a product of necessity. After the French successfully conquered much of North Africa, they experienced continual conflict. And I'm going to quote you directly from a book that I read on this topic. They had conflict over the occupation and subjectation. Hmm. They had conflict over the occupation and subjection of the natives. So yeah, the people whose lands who were living there 
resisted somebody else coming in, and they most definitely still occupied the space. The French suffered both financially and physically from the resistance and needed a solution. You see, the French army was ill-equipped for the hot and harsh environment of North Africa. Their sensitive stomachs couldn't even drink the local water and were often sick and weak. So in 1830, the French Minister of the Navy suggested using native tribesmen. These African soldiers have demonstrated they are quite the equal of French soldiers, he wrote. Now if he'd stopped right there, we would all live in a different world, but he didn't. They are equal in courage, they are intelligent, and they are nerd to fatigue. And with those words, he weaponized them. He, as so many before and after, have used words that were able to manipulate perceptions of groups of people. And this very much still occurs today, with our own president calling angry white people complaining about masks good citizens, and bodies of color complaining about being murdered thugs. Words matter, and how we use them form our perceptions. And all of this can be rearranged. When we relearn what we think we know, because you know what? The first Zuwalis weren't inert to fatigue. They were born of the land. They were better equipped to the hot and harsh environment. They also had thousands of years fighting in warfare and can be traced back to 5000 BC. They did so well that the walls became the most decorated and elite of the French army of Africa. But we know history. After 12 years, 12 years of gaining recognition, of learning the tricks of the environment and how to survive, after stealing moves derived from Algerian soldiers, the Zouaves stop recruiting black and brown bodies. They only allowed white European bodies to join this elite group. And this is why it's beyond time that this group formed that then came to experience this worldwide entertainment quality <clears throat> that once traveled Highway 127 and became part of this very show that I'm talking to. And this is just one story of so many. Robert McFate has works of art all spanning all over the history. And if you have time, come schedule a show. It's up until June 27th. But because of COVID, you need to schedule and not just show up. So, reserve your spot.